Hello, and welcome to another installment of Acting in Honesty. This is part five. Um, we just, we, I, just uh, read through chapter five of The Way of Integrity by Martha Beck over this last week. Um, I also had uh, my acting class yesterday, and uh, I was able to do a scene uh, we do a scene every other week about, and so I did my scene, um, which I want to get into as well. And so yeah, we're going to talk a little bit about acting class, we're going to talk a bit about this book, and maybe see if we can find some common threads. So the class went really, really well. Um, the scene was very successful, which felt really good. Um, it was a scene from Lost in Translation by Sofia Coppola from 2003 and uh, we always do the scene twice and it was it felt really good to do the scene and the feedback was really wonderful too um the teacher thought it was extremely successful got some really great feedback from from some of the other students in class um so the word that actually kept coming up for me um after the class was alignment, um, which may actually be a good segue for this book. And what I mean by alignment is that the way it felt was aligned with the way it was received. Um, I felt very successful. I felt very in, in the moment. I felt very present. Um, and Michelle, my scene partner, um, was also really present as well. And we were just really in it uh, together. And and that was received by the class and the teacher. Um, in fact, I also wanted to share that the teacher said she was proud of me because the previous scenes, the previous two scenes that I'd done, um, you know, chalk it up to theater experience or whatever, but um, I was sort of amplifying things, I was pushing a bit. You could see me acting, basically. Um, whereas with this scene, uh, that wasn't happening. I was able to be a lot more natural. Um, in some ways, the scene itself was helpful for that. It was a lot more of a natural type of scene anyway. Uh, it was slower and allowed me to take my time and allowed Michelle to take her time. So uh, that was really helpful. But as I was saying before, the the word that kept coming up for me was alignment. Um I felt aligned in the moment and aligned on a larger scale with, oh, this experience and this activity is really resonant for me. Um, so like on a, from a larger scope, um, the more I work on acting, the more it feels very resonant for me. Um, like, oh, this is, this is a path I need to be traveling, you know? Um, and that is for a few reasons. One is just like the actual genuine excitement I get from getting a script, um, and analyzing the script, diving into a character all the way to, um, being in the moment of, of actually performing it and really kind of losing myself uh, in that experience, but I think losing myself isn't quite the right term. Um, there's, I mean, I could probably speak to this for a while and I'm sure a lot of actors have a lot of thoughts on this, but it's almost a trance like state, um, for lack of a better way of describing it. Um, when I'm in the process of actually performing a character um, it's, yeah, it's almost as if I'm in a trance. One of the, the students, other students asked me what I was thinking about during the second half of the scene. And I was able to come up with a few things, but really I was just, uh, it, it's, it's really almost ephemeral, you know, the, the, the feeling that happens there. Um, obviously there are thoughts that are happening, um, and feelings that are happening, and I was able to connect to those and I was able to describe them to my classmate. Um, but I just, I find the whole process really fascinating and really enriching to me. So, so alignment. 
Um, so yeah, I was I was really feeling really great of after that class. Um, a little bit of redemption from the previous classes, but also just when I think anytime we're in flow with any kind of activity, um, we do fall into a bit of a trance-like state. We do lose ourselves a little bit. We you know have a we lose a sense of time and place and. And there's a sort of suspension that happens, and that's very satisfying to anyone. Um, so for me, the process of acting feels like a way to access that flow state. Um, so I'm really, I'm really compelled. So alignment that feels very uh, aligned with a lot of what the way of integrity is about, because the way of integrity is about being in alignment with with yourself. And so to shift gears into the book, chapter five is titled Into the Inferno. And essentially it's about rewiring the way we, we rewiring our belief system. Oftentimes our belief system about ourself um, or how we, how we perceive the world and how we relate to the world. Um, I have a few quotes uh, and things that I pulled from the book that I really like. She says, our worst psychological suffering comes from thoughts that we genuinely believe while simultaneously knowing they aren't true. I'm going to say that again. Our worst psychological suffering comes from thoughts that we genuinely believe while simultaneously knowing they aren't true. Uh, and she said, this may sound ridiculous. On the surface, it does. But... I think we all can connect with that. There are these belief systems that we've adopted for ourselves over our lifetime through different types of conditioning, oftentimes as a means of survival from earlier in our life, and then they don't end up serving us anymore, yet we keep holding on to those belief systems. So, but I think there's this knowing she talks about this, this contradiction this almost paradox of believing something and also knowing it's not true and not really knowing how to release ourselves from this faulty belief system so in a way really what this chapter is about is how to release ourselves from these belief systems so she has us work with you know the what she calls the the troubling but not devastating topic. Um, we wrote a list of them in a previous chapter, and we're basically working with one all the way through um, just to give a sense of like how this process works. So what I had chosen was the idea that I'm, that I'm unkind, um, primarily to myself, but also internally to the outside world oftentimes, mostly when I'm feeling afraid or... Um, when I'm feeling like I need to be, um, well, that goes into a whole other thing. But I think for me, I feel I have um, carried this belief that I'm only truly safe when I'm uh, on top or um, doing my very best in all the ways, following all the rules, doing everything at, at, at A plus level. Um, and so that has manifested into being unkind to myself and others when I'm not feeling like that. Um, that's a whole other, a whole other arena. Um, but some other things she says in this book, she says, being split from ourselves is hell. It's a form of hell. So... A big part of what this is, is observe the demons. She says, observe the demons. This is what, um, in Dante's Inferno, uh, what, what Dante ends up doing is observe the demons, ask questions about them, and move on. So she has basically this sort of process that she has you go through, um, where you basically do that. Um, and I won't go into all the ins and outs of it, but... Um, basically a, you know, a multi-step exercise where you take these um, beliefs that you have and basically kind of um, pull them apart, kind of disentangle them. 
Um, something else she says is, but when your longing to be free from suffering outweighs your fear of moving ahead, follow the way of integrity through the steps below. So that's her sort of introduction to the exercise. So basically, I mean, that, that's a powerful statement too, which I'll repeat. When your longing to be free from suffering outweighs your fear of moving ahead, then you go through these exercises. And this is why she talks about killing um, cowardice and the kind of courage this takes because oftentimes these belief systems that we've developed for ourselves they're so deeply ingrained in our system that the idea of thinking or believing something else is just outside of our scope or it feels way too scary, um, way too unknown. To, to believe something differently. So, you know, she's encouraging us to be kind to ourselves as we move through. So, um, let's see what she says here. Their observing selves can watch their suffering while also noticing that they're wearing a... Oh, I see. So, um, I highlighted that because what she part of what she has us do in the exercises is, you know, think these thoughts, have these beliefs, you know, really dive deep into them, and then simultaneously check in with where we are in the actual moment, you know, through our observations, what we're seeing, hearing, smelling, all that, um, bringing us right into the present moment and helping us realize that in this present moment, we're actually okay. So we have these harmful belief systems that are causing us suffering, and yet we're actually okay. So there's this sort of disconnect that she, she unveils to you. Um, and help, it helps us realize that we actually can move through these belief systems and disentangle them. Um, so yeah, there's multiple steps and it was, it was pretty great, um, to work with. Uh, I really do feel like even just go from, you know, going through that one, um, one topic through this process was really helpful. Um, and I wanted to find, I feel like I remember there being another, um, quote, we like to strongly affirm our beliefs and prove that we're right. Damn it. Yeah. It makes me think of the bumper sticker I've seen a number of times. Don't believe everything you think really powerful. Um, and, oh yeah, asking the question, are you sure? That's another powerful piece of this. You know, we feel so strongly about certain things and especially these beliefs that have been with us from a very early age or have been conditioned on us throughout most of our life they seem like they're complete truths. They're like, you know, uh, absolute truths. But then if we just ask the question, are you sure? Are you sure about that? And she says, once you begin to question the truth of an inner demon, its days are numbered. So you basically, and she has, of course, through these exercises, you know, these different types of questions to ask, um, ask of your demons. And one thing I also really loved is this sort of time travel dimension, which by what I mean by that is she says, thinking about going back to her 25 year old self and the fears and harmful beliefs that she had at that age. And now she's able to realize, oh yeah, that was a completely irrational fear and I don't even have that anymore. So thinking about going back to that old self and telling that old self, and you, even going back to childhood, she has us go back to childhood and and ch and check in with one of the fears that we had as a child and say, hey, turns out that wasn't something to be afraid of, actually. That's not even a real thing. And so the reason why that's really impactful, I think, is twofold. One is that I am above the belief, and there's a lot of psychological research um, and practices to kind of back this up, which is that when we spend time healing the wounds from our child, excuse me, from our childhood, when we spend time even communicating with our inner child, with our the person of our of the past, it does things. Now, it 
on the surface, it seems like, well, that seems strange. Why would me communicating with my past self, with my childhood self, how's that going to help me now? But I do think that there's some sort of unraveling, disentangling that happens when we go back and we talk to that child self. If, if only happening on a, on a deep level or even a spiritual level. And the other part of that is that if we can imagine the fact that we're going back in time to attend to those fears, then why can't we project out into the future and imagine that this future self, 15, 20, 30 years in the future, is having those same understandings of our fear and coming back to us in the now and telling us those aren't true. Those aren't real. You don't have to believe those anymore. So, in a sense, what this book is, I think, doing, at least in this chapter, is, is sort of sending us into the future where we can realize that these things aren't true and then come back to ourselves in the now. So, yeah, really fabulous. It, it, it feel, I feel inspired to take a number of the topics, the, the demons, as it were, um, and work them through these exercises because um, there's a number of them that would be really helpful to do that with. And of course, it's not like you flip a switch and you're good to go. Um, it this is a this is a ongoing process. You know, I could probably take the same topic and work it through multiple times over the course of days, weeks, and months, and and benefit from that. So, um, yeah, this is this is definitely it's an intense book. Um, it is not for the faint of heart, as it were. Um, if you, if you're not interested in really doing some work on yourself, uh, then it might be pretty intimidating. Um, but again, like she says in that one quote, if you're, if you're sick of suffering and you're ready to let go of some fear, then move forward. So yeah. Um, and, and I think that is one of the paths towards alignment. Um, and I'll close with something that my acting teacher mentioned about the scene that we worked on that really struck a chord for me. Uh, she talked about trust. And the scene we did was really slow, very naturalistic. And so we really had to take our time with it. And she mentioned that be because of the nature of this scene, we really had to trust in our scene partner, trust in ourselves, trust that it's just going to unfold as it needs to. And I really do think that Michelle and I were able to tap into that trust. And that's a huge piece for me, not only as an actor, but as a person in life. Trust has definitely been a challenge for me. Um, control feels like the opposite of trust. And so I think whenever at least I feel fear or insecure, there's a desire to take control. And most often that doesn't help. I would say probably 99% of the time trying to take control doesn't help as opposed to breathing and listening and tuning in to not only what's happening around us in the present moment, but into our the deeper part of ourselves, the intuitive self. Um, yeah, and I do think that this book is is a big, um, big piece of that. I think that's a big piece, or I should say that's a big piece of what she's hoping to achieve with this work, is for us to really tune into a, a deeper truth of ourselves. Um, and yeah, and, and the reason I'm even doing this is because for me personally, the process of acting is such a profound avenue to connect with the deeper parts of myself. So like I mentioned in the front end, there's some, seems kind of ironic, but I think it's really compelling and really fascinating. So that's part five for those of you who are watching and listening. Um, I hope this is, you're getting something out of it. Um, at the very least, I'm preserving these for posterity. So onward and upward to further scenes and further chapters in the way of integrity.
Thank you.